And let's just jump right into this. Let's just start with, let's say four square. So you can see here that this is a pretty quick animation. So it's just under three seconds long, but let's say we want this to be a lot faster, right? We want this to be like half the speed or three to twice the speed, very quick, quick. It's already a very quick animation, but how do we do that? Well, in any editor, Premiere is the example here, you should be able to uh, change the speed duration of the clip and you treat these just like footage. So footage, you can speed up the footage, you can slow it down, whatever editor you're in. In Premiere, all I did was I right clicked on my render here and I said speed duration and I'm just gonna change it from 100% to 200%. You can see the duration goes down to one second, 12 frames, which is one and a half seconds. Click okay. And there we go, it's even faster now, right? So these are these are optimized, you can speed them up, you can slow them down, they're still gonna look great because they do have uh, very good compression going on with the HEVC codec. So I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna show you now how quick, how easy it is just to loop these. So in Premiere, um, unfortunately there's no easy way to do this other than just to hold down Option and drag and there we go, there's a second version of our clip. I can hold it down again. And you can see here, it's just going to loop amongst all these elements here. So super easy to loop. And you can do this with any of the renders uh, inside the pack. Let me show you really quickly how you do this inside of After Effects. Okay, so here in After Effects, it's really easy to loop these animations. All you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on the element, you're gonna to go to interpret footage main, and right at the bottom here, it's gonna say loop. And it always defaults to one time. You're gonna change this to whatever amount of loops you wanna do. If you have a set amount of loops, you're gonna type that number in. If you don't, you can just type in any number, say like 10, and I can bring that now down to my timeline here, and you're gonna see that it just extends for this entire animation, this entire timeline here. And it's just gonna loop the entire time. So it's really easy to use this inside of After Effects just like this. It's just loop, loop, loop. If I go back up here and I go to interpret footage main and I turn off loop and that's just by setting it back to one, you can see here's where the original clip ends at, right? So um, a lot of times you'll just do command D, you'll duplicate it and you can drag it here and now it's gonna loop here. But an easy way to do this is just go to interpret footage main, go down here to loop and set this to the number of times you want it to loop. And there you go. It's just gonna loop, loop, loop that many times. Okay, so let's say that you really, let's find an animation here that we really dig. So let's say this one. We wanna use this shape element here. I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down so we can see the full thing, uh, something like that. And let's say that we, you know, we don't want it to be green and purple. We want it to be something else. So how do we how do we adjust the colors of this? It's really, really simple to do. In Premiere, we're gonna go to effects here and we're just gonna find our video effects. And this is gonna be the same case in any editor. You're gonna go to like something like color correction. And we can do something as simple as color balance. Drag this effect on. Oops. So we can do something as simple as color balance, hue, lightness, and saturation, and just play with the hue. So I'm just gonna click and drag and watch the image on the right side as it starts to change colors. We can get some really interesting results this way uh, just by playing with the, the hue slider here. So now I've got something totally do, different. It's like, you know, orange and purple. So this is with color correction. This is without, this is with, this is without. So you can see it's very easy to change. I can do this with um, any of the renders in here. So let me find something else here. Drag it here. It's, it's called Digi Square. It's a pretty cool one. It's got some texture inside of it. Take the hue, start dragging around. Now it's more pink. Now it's red, yellow, orange. That's a very you know interesting, cool look to it. Um, some things you're gonna have to render. You can see there's a red line here for rendering, so it doesn't wanna play back uh, in real time. It is gonna play back pretty well though. I can take color balance off. You can do more advanced coloring by using something like Lumetri. 
um, in Premiere. Again, any other editor system, you're going to have different uh, color correction tools you can use. Um, but like here in uh, Lumetri, we can you know start to play with things like curves. You can also do this in After Effects, right? You can uh, really play around a lot with the levels and curves and things like that and get some really interesting looks out of these. So that's how you do some very simple color correction uh, to completely change the look of these animations. Okay, so in the trailer I created for this product, uh, there's different parts in the trailer where you see the glitch effect. The glitches uh, do a lot of very quick flickering, which is a very common thing you see in glitch um, art these days. And how I did that is some of these glitches are rendered out with the kind of flicker effect going on, many of them aren't. I wanted you to give the most, give you the most uh, flexibility with these elements. So if you want to add a kind of a flicker effect to these glitches, it's really easy to do. So I'll play this in real time. This one just fades in, runs through this tunnel, fades out. It's one of my favorite ones. All we have to do is set a keyframe for 100% at frame zero. Go one frame in, set it to zero, one more frame, 100%. And instead of setting all these keyframes through the rest of this, all we have to do now is option click to set an expression and click right here, go to property, loop out duration, click outside of the expression. And I'm going to preview this and you can see now we've got this really crazy flickering glitch effect. And this is very powerful with these elements. If it's a little bit too fast, all I have to do is just space out. Maybe instead of one frame, there are two frames apart, like so. And now it's a you know a little bit slower flicker. Maybe even you know that that actually works for this quite well. A lot of glitches you're going to see really fast flickering, um, like maybe one frame, like we started with. But that's how you set this up inside of a program like After Effects that can use expressions. Um, it's really simple to use this uh, this way. Okay, so here we are in Premiere, and it's not as easy to add the flickering effect here in Premiere uh, because we can't use expressions at this time. Uh, how we would do it in Premiere is I would just go to frame one, set a keyframe here, 100%. I would then go forward one frame, set it to zero, one more frame, 100. And then at this point, I'd probably start copying and pasting keyframes. So I'll Command C, Command V, Command C, Command V, like so. And actually we're gonna get like a, kind of like a stuttering effect there. But you get the idea, this is how you would uh, create like the flickering effect uh, on these elements if you wish to do that uh, for the glitch effect. And one other quick thing I want to show you guys is if you, uh, another way to kind of cheat this effect without doing keyframes on the footage is we could use something like a white solid. And I actually, I'll jump back here into After Effects to show you this. You can do this in Premiere as well. But what I would do here is I would add a new solid, make it the comp size, make it 100% white, click OK. And on this solid, I would, and like I said, you can do this from Premiere or any other uh, editing system. You're just not going to have the expressions, but I can do the same thing. Property, loop out duration. And you can see here, it creates an even more intense uh, flash effect. Um, and we can, you know, space out these keyframes again, like so. If we want it to be a little bit slower, that's kind of nice. Uh, something else you could try is change it from normal to screen or add, a little more intense. Uh, you could even try things like overlay. That's interesting. So that makes the neon. Uh, just flicker a little bit more on its own, which is actually really cool. So you could do this, like I said, in Premiere and any other editor, but that is how you customize these glitches uh, to really bring them to life, to, to make them even more glitchy, 
Again, I invite you to layer them on top of each other, make some completely new glitches, and I wanna see what you come up with. Again, thank you so much for purchasing the Neon Glitch Shape Pack. I look forward to seeing what you come up with.